Welcome to Four Finger Discount, where this week we're here to review an episode that no longer exists. It's Stark Raving Dad. I'm Dando. And I am the big white guy who thinks he's the little black guy. No, <laughs> just call me guy. You do like your soul and everything though, don't you? I do indeed. Uh, what jazz instrument would you play if you were a jazz musician? What do you think? Because you're a very Miles Davis-esque fan, aren't you? I am. So I like to think I would be a trumpet guy. Uh, although a sax guy would not be bad either. Do you pee your pants? That's the question. <laughs> I was peeing my pants before it was cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Works we all. And we'll get and we'll continue to do continue to do so after it stops being. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. When, uh, when was the point where you realised I don't care if I'm not cool anymore? I th- I'm way way past that now. But there is a point. I think it's maybe in your like mid to late twenties where you go, I'm no longer like you go out to a nightclub. I think it's the first time you go to a nightclub and you realise, ah, oh, these people are like ten years younger than me. I'm the old, I'm the old guy to them now. That's where you start going. I don't give a shit. Yeah, it took a little while beyond the twenties. It was probably okay. my thirties. Yeah, I think when I because I think when I became a dad, it was for me. I just went, ah, I'm, I'm a dad now. So it's okay to be uncool when you're a dad, right? Oh, I imagine so. Yeah. So I, I don't have kids, so I'm constantly. What's your excuse? <laughs> That's the thing. I am constantly searching for validation from the young generation. Have I got the Riz kids? I've got the Riz, right? <laughs> They're saying the future is now, old man. Yeah. No, no. Um, you're right. Oh, yeah. I, I'd, Jazz, probably, yeah. I'd probably be a, a trumpet player, maybe a saxophonist. Uh, the lovely Louise's younger son, musical prodigy Felix, recently got his own saxophone over the weekend. He was very happy with it. It's got, you know, inscriptions on it and up here, up, hearing his infernal tootling on it. I was like, oh, man. I mean, I wish I was more musical. I mean, I clearly have a lovely singing voice, as listeners of the podcast will know. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke, Phil. Uh, Stay tuned, there's plenty of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I think I, 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 like the, I like the idea of a trumpet. It just seems like a, a small, compact instrument, you know. You, you're not having to lug a whole... But imagine being a tuba player. Nicola's a saxophonist. Is that a saxophonist? Saxophonist? Sa- saxophonist? Saxophonist, yeah. She's, That's right, I remember you She's saying. great at it, yeah. She plays a Lion King. Because when she was at... The first thing she learnt was to play the Lion King songs on the saxophone. Okay. Yeah. She's great at it. Yeah, it's awesome. So you'll, you'll get the occasional Hakuna Matata. Yeah. Wow. She's very musical, Nicola. Very, very... I'm very, very talented, my wife, as is your, uh, your lovely Louise, your partner. Well, her, her great talent was finding, you know, a good boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> now, you know who were, was very talented, and still is... Is the uh, Al Jean, the Simpsons showrunner. I thought you were about to say Michael Jackson. It's like, is there something you know that we don't? <laughs> and uh, Mike Reese, who took over from the show at the beginning of season three. This was their first episode that went to air. Um, they people, you know, Fans of the Simpsons say that the golden era started with this episode, with season three. Mm-hmm. However, unfortunately, after the is it Finding Neverland, the documentary that came out a few years ago. I think that's what it's called. Leaving yeah. Neverland? Ne- maybe Leaving, Leaving Neverland. Leaving Neverland. Yeah, the yes. movie is Finding Neverland. That's right. Leaving Neverland came out and all the allegations about Michael Jackson with, you know, we've all, we all know the, the details. Which the had been circulating for a fair, a fair while before that documentary came out and before these two young men in particular went on the record. Yeah, there's a reason they called him Wacko Jacko, right? Mm. And then Al Jean, I'm, not, I'm sure Mike Reese as well, but Al Jean's the one that went on the record as saying... We took this out of circulation, this episode, no longer available on streaming or on um, free to air, what do you call it? Uh, syndication. Syndication, yeah. Because we, or he believes that Michael Jackson used this episode to groom kids. And when I had never seen this until you sent it to me in preparation for this episode. I never thought about it that way. I've always seen it as a bit of a tragedy that this episode's been taken off the air because of a, it felt like a snap judgment, oh, this documentary's coming out, we don't want to be affiliated with it, let's pull the episode. We don't want The Simpsons to be thrown in with, like, Michael Jackson was once on The Simpsons, let's quick, let's pull it away from circulation. He has gone on the record, it was with the Daily Beast, the interview, right, right, Al Jean, yeah. where he says, I have no proof, it's just my gut feeling that he would have used this to groom kids. I'm not saying he's right or wrong. It's still a shame that we've lost the episode, but I can understand now why it no longer exists because the guy who created it feels dirty about it. Oh, yeah, it feels uh, you know, complicit. And it's a shame that that happened. I, I was surprised as anyone to, to read that uh, piece by or that interview with Al Jean. I, I hadn't really heard about it until... Yeah, I'll chuck the link for the, for the interview in the description of this because it's not all about that, but they use that as the headline... Let's hook you in with this. That's right. I think the reporter in, who did it is a bit of a muckraker and all. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not a huge fan. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, the uh, gist of that article is about season three and about the sort of the birth of the golden age yeah. of The Simpsons. Yeah, but this is, certainly comes up. And Al Jean's not the only guy to talk about it. I mean, James L. Brooks has, has also mm. gone on the record and saying, look, I'm not for book burning. I'm not for censorship. But think of it is, 
this is our book. I created and, it. Yeah, yeah. And, and we're entitled to take a chapter out of it if we choose to do so. Clearly, they chose to do so. Now, there's still a means to get access to the episode. Uh, I'm holding up here, as you'll see if you're watching this show right now, hold up to the camera, the season three box set. And it was so lovely to pull out the box set. It felt like, and I know all the allegations are going around, and I understand why they took the episode off, but it was so nice putting this episode on. I think I've watched it for 10, 15 years. It was like seeing an old friend. As, really? as weird as that may sound, because it's got the whole MJ sort of taint to it now. But I just went, oh, that's right, this episode. It's like it's like rediscovering it again. I, had, I hadn't watched it for so long. And it's just a shame that, like, for example, Elliot now, because he started watching The Simpsons a, a bit more often, younger generations now won't really know the episode exists unless their parents say, this one exists too. Then it might be incumbent on parents to say, oh, well, they may say, well, why, why can't I see it on Disney Plus? Or why can't I see it in, by any other means? And then you've got to... But then you've got all the other... You know, they, they put a little stinger at the start of Aladdin and things like that saying that it doesn't reflect us. But I guess there's nothing in the episode that reflects poorly as how the episode they... He, Al Jean and Jim, James Brooks feel it might have been used. That's why they've taken it down. So it's a different... Yeah, that's right. I mean, fish, there's I guess, no so. sort of retrograde racism or no. tobacco depictions. Seeing a lot of... De- <laughs> yeah, there is. Yeah. Seeing a lot of tobacco depictions in front of recent episodes of certain things. I don't have the uh, the box set that you do. I had to obtain my copy of Stark Raving Dad by, well, let's say it rhymes with biracy. Well, there's a, there's <laughs> a guy, I, I can't remember who it was, but cause I posted about it on our Twitter, at Four Finger Pod, if you want to follow us on Twitter. Because you can't follow us on Facebook anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this is still happening? At Four Finger Discount on Instagram as well. And we're going to be getting the TikTok happening at Four Finger Discount on TikTok <laughs> as well. <laughs> That's right. There's a we're ticking and we're talking. 50-something-year-old man on TikTok. What the kids are tuning in. Al Jean will not be watching. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I? What was, oh, he put the full episode on Twitter because Twitter just is just a free for all now. There's no copyright. There's nothing, so you can watch it for free on Twitter if you just search Stark Raving yeah. Dad. A lot of things are coming up on Twitter. It's like you'll see this uh, post saying, "Oh fuck it, here's the full movie of such and such. It just came out, so you know it'll be on Pirate Bay or whatever." Yeah. And I've just uploaded to Twitter. It will <laughs> hang around forever. Yeah. It's, like, <laughs> it's crazy. Here's the whole movie of the Flash. I'm like, I've got no desire to watch this, but. What? It's there? Yeah. <laughs> Daddy Elon, you're not taking it down? What's going on? Yeah. Freedom of speech, baby. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Freedom of piracy. <laughs> <laughs> but you start craving that. Do you think it's sad that it's been removed from circulation? It's sad, but it's understandable, I think. It's probably the best way to put it, right? Going back to what uh, Mr. Brooks said, yeah, look, they wrote the book. They're entitled to take a chapter out of it. I think for a show that is ostensibly a family show, yeah, it... <sighs> It may raise too many awkward questions. And I understand where Al Jean is coming from as well in that feeling of complicity that they may have had something to do with... Uh, the grooming of children. Yeah, the grooming of children. And yeah, you don't want your name attached to that. I mean, you would just... It would give you the ick. But I had never heard anybody throw that out there until he pitched that. Mm. So if he'd never said that, did, would you have ever assumed that? Would you ever have gone, you know what? He might have used this to groom children. Was, was that mentioned in the doco? I don't think it was, was it? I don't think so. No, I mean... Not I that only, I can recall, anyway. No, no. I mean, I remember watching the Neverland documentary when it came out. I wrote a wrote a piece about it for uh, for the music magazine when I was doing my column for that. Didn't some of it get debunked? I was saying they, they met at a certain place and that place wasn't built at the time in which they said it was going to be there or something. I and think you had a lot of amateur sleuths going... Well, this doesn't add up, and this doesn't scan. There's no wind on the moon. <laughs> yeah, it it really felt like grasping at straws in a lot of ways. I'm I'm kind of inclined to take certain allegations and certain accusations with a bit of a grain of salt, and until I you know get as much evidence as possible. Watching the evidence of these two, I was about to say young men. I mean, they're still relatively young, I guess, when they were being interviewed for this doco. It's like I'm 100 percent buying this. You can't. Well, you weren't there, so you can't. Yeah, but the, these particular recollections and the way they um, express themselves, the way they, what they recollected, how they, how they expressed that, I was like, they seem pretty this, this, precise. This, this feels very, very precise, very authentic, very authentic. Yeah, very lived in. Yeah. So this interview where he said about the the grooming of children was 2019. I don't think he'd said it beforehand because when did the doco come out? Finding Neverland or leaving Neverland? Sorry. Oh, it'll be sometime in the, I want to say maybe 2017, 2018. Leaving Neverland, 29, so it was the same year, 2019. It's only five oh. years ago. I thought it was a lot longer than that. Time keeps on slipping into the future, man. But there was another point in the interview, though, where he 
the interviewer asked about how Michael Jackson, because he wrote the Happy Birthday Lisa song. Great song. I love the song. One of my favorite Simpsons songs. It's a shame it won't get used anymore or heard anymore. But he brings up the, do you think there was something to the first kiss from a boy? Oh, yeah. I'm thinking, you're really trying to that, find something here. That's that's grasping that, at straws. That's, and I think Al Jean even said maybe. I was like, no, 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 no. That's just, it felt like a year 10 student trying to like uh, overanalyze a film for an essay. You know, it's a, he wrote us, it fits the song. He wasn't yeah, trying to he, hide a hidden agenda about loving boys in this song. It was just, it was wacko. It rhymes, it rhymes with joy. It rhymes with joy and that's, you know. Uh, Girls, um, girls think about their first kiss from a boy in night. What? Well, not anymore, but you know, in nineteen ninety two or whatever when this aired. Yeah, ever since Katy Perry, it's all about kissing girls. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah, no. I don't think Michael Jackson spent hours and hours coming up with the lyrics to "Happy Birthday, Lisa." I'm pretty sure this was sort of dashed up on the back of a napkin. It felt like it, it didn't it really. It? Did. But that was the charm to it because that's what it was supposed to have been. Sure. Yeah, I guess I'm up all night writing it. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> but I, overall, though, I um I really enjoyed going back and revisiting this episode. There's a lot that goes like into the um the behind the scenes of it. It's really really interesting. So Matt Groening says that he was working back late at the office one night, which I not sure I believe that Matt <laughs> Groening being the only one back at the office working away. But anyway, so he says. And the phone rings, and it's Michael Jackson saying, I'd love to be a guest on the show. First of all, I'm not sure Michael Jackson would just call up, but, you know, he says that's what happened. That, yeah. that, it makes for a good story. And that he wanted to be a guest, and it took him about a minute before he actually believed him, which is what they did in the show with Bart refusing to believe Leon until after about a minute or so. Absolutely. Um, but well, yeah, it, it's I, the I, kind I of voice see, where, I just can't yeah. see Michael Jackson calling up at, in the middle of the night. I can't be speak to Matt Green. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big fan of The Simpsons. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I buy that, but that's that's the story they're going with anyway. Have you watched that documentary about the making of We Are The World? It's on Netflix at the moment. I've seen clips of it. There was like three weeks of negotiations and phone calls and contracts and all this kind of stuff to actually get that going on. I doubt very much that you know, Michael Jackson, as you said, is calling up in the middle of the night, give me the number for The Simpsons, H H HQ, give me the writer's room. <laughs> <laughs> So, my apologies to anyone who's a big MJ fan, me doing this god-awful impersonation. Later on, I'll do Prince. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it strikes me as very print the legend that Matt Groening would say. First of all, I was working late in the office one night. <laughs> no, not happening. <laughs> Secondly, pick up the phone, ring, ring. It's Michael Jackson. <laughs> it's like, no, it's not happening. <laughs> but let's cut out all the... He did ask him who his last four dates of the Grammys were. <laughs> There goes a trivia oh, question. I might want to win as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got mutually assured destruction here. But he did apparently he did say to Matt that, or one of the one of the workers that he wants to give Bart a number one single. So he wrote "Do the Bartman." Really? Yeah, Michael Jackson wrote "Do the Bartman." I didn't know that. Really? I did not know that. Yeah, he. Yep, he did. He is hmm. the he is the writer of "Everybody If You Can Do the Bartman." Yeah. That was Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being on that bit from South Park now. Mm. I remember that episode. Yeah. Like, I know he touched some children, but it's Michael Jackson. Yeah. Michael Jackson. It's, it's Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> if, you have, if you enjoy South Park, check out our Going Down to South Park podcast. You available really on all your good podcast platforms. But apparently his conditions were he couldn't sing. Um, he could do the, the spoken dialogue, but for some legal reasons he couldn't do the singing. But they said when he, they did the first run through, he did sing the songs and did everything. Yes. And they there's a, there's a rumor going around that... Um, he recorded his own versions of uh, Happy mm. Birthday, Lisa, and all the other songs like Ben when he sings Homer. Mm. And at the last minute, they were replaced with the MJ ones. Yes. So we'll never know because they had Kip Lemon as the impersonator. That's right. But apparently the sound guy has said, no, no, that, that never happened. And I was like, go with that, man. <laughs> <laughs> Why ruin that dream? Everybody just, let's get our story straight. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't ruin this legend. You know, just... Yeah. If, if, the, if the legend was that Michael Jackson wasn't allowed to, and at the last minute he slipped it in at the last second, that'd make him cool. Are we allowed to say that he was, he's, he was, he was talented as a musician? Oh, yeah. It's Look. just, it's, it's weird. Has it been long enough now where we can sort of talk about him as a, as a talent? Or Yeah, this is something we were talking about the other day, wasn't it? Because we started talking about various cancelled individuals yeah. and, and how, yeah, sadly there are a lot out there who were <laughs> very, very good at what they did. This is probably why they were in able able to reach positions of influence or power where either they were able to commit misdeeds or their misdeeds could be swept under the rug. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people who are now regarded as monsters being punished for their crimes were actually pretty good at what they did or 
Yeah, it's a, it's a, I think we were talking about situation. we were talking about the people who are like associated with them. So, for example, people saying we can't watch that movie anymore. But, so, but what about all the people that were working on that film who put their blood, sweat, and tears into their role or behind the camera or whatever it was of writing the movie? Now all their hard work is forgotten about because of one individual. It's, it's a weird thing to. It really is. Yeah, I'm not. A, I'm not a fan of uh, cancellation for that for that reason. Yeah, it's like I don't hire them going forward, but let's not cancel everything that they, that they were in previously because that means everyone else who worked on that project as well is it's also be forgotten penalized. about. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. As have we? I think someone with the magnitude of talent and influence and I guess reach that Michael Jackson had is never going to be wholly forgotten, and there's always going to be an asterisk next to their name. It's like. Thriller, you know, biggest album of the 1980s. Michael Jackson, you know, incredible, you know, uh, run of Grammy wins and all this kind of business. Also accused of molesting kids. I did love the story of they did the run through at Michael Jackson's manager's house. And so they said the first time they ran through it was just Michael Jackson. The second time they were there to like record or whatever on the second run through. And it's, other guy just walks in, Kip Lemon, and just sung, sings the songs. I didn't tell the Simpsons stuff oh. that was going to happen. They were sort of going, all right, this is where you sing. And Michael Jackson just sat there silently and this Kip Lemon just walked into the room and started singing the songs. And they were like, well, this is weird. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> Would have appreciated a heads up yeah. on this one, Mike. <laughs> Apparently Dan Castle and Ed was 20 minutes late to it as well. Oh, boy. Which doesn't help, no. <laughs> but yeah, I, I would have loved if, he, if he's... It, even if his versions were available somewhere, I'd love to hear him singing the Lisa in Super Cool. It's such a happy song, you know? It is. It is very nice. I think when you got a, when you've got a sister, I've got a sister, you want them to be happy. I do. Having said this... Yeah. Uh, the bitches. My, 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 <laughs> no, no. My beloved sister, Margot, who probably does not listen to this podcast, I missed your birthday, Margot. You missed it? I did. It was Saturday and I still haven't got in touch. I'm sorry. My mum. Are you serious? You 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 know you realise you've forgotten. You, so you're just scared to get in touch now. Or what do you do? Is it a case of you're trying to think of the I'm, present? I'm, it's like memento. I'm remembering every twenty minutes. That's like call Margot, <laughs> and I was like, but I've got other stuff to do. I've got to record this podcast. I've I've got other stuff to do. Wow, we. I know. As soon as we're done here, I'll be calling Margot. She's just sitting. At Happy the, birthday, Margot. <laughs> She's just sitting at the, at the um kitchen table with the party hat on. <laughs> Happy birthday, <laughs> forgotten middle child. <laughs> My mum came by the other day and said, now, were you sick on the weekend? I said, no, no, Lou's had COVID, but no, I'm all right. Because you missed Margot's birthday. You didn't call Margot. I'm like, no. Oh, she, must, she must have complained to, Mar- to Margaret Mary as well. Mum was probably like, oh, did you hear from her? What did I get you? Yeah. Well, Do you still get presents for your sister? No, not really. Really? You're no. a shit brother. <laughs> I don't get any presents. <laughs> really? No, no. We're just more like, give a call, send a card. Milestone birthdays. Cards are insulting to me. I'm not a fan of greeting cards and birthday cards. Oh, you're when not. you're a little kid, so be it. But I don't know, just what a waste of money. You can just write that message. Uh, on, do, you, do you keep the cards? Not all, no. Uh, I don't know. Just Nick, Nicola is my, or my wife, for you viewers and listeners, huge fan of the card. If, you, if I don't get her a card, she's really, really sad. Mm-hmm. I've just never cared. I just, I just feel, I'm off, spend an extra five bucks on my present, please. Yeah. I don't want a card. I wholly understand where you're coming from. I mean, I'm not necessarily someone who's like oh you forgot my birthday oh where's my card or where's my friend this may and this will lead into something i want to talk about in just a sec but uh yeah i do feel bad that i haven't contacted her at the very least i mean i think we've we've all reached the stage because i mean i'm the youngest and i'm in my 50s as long as you feel bad that's all that matters that is all that matters Hmm. now here's to what i wanted to talk about with this with this episode one thing that i didn't really like Mm. i don't like people putting pressure on someone to celebrate their birthday i thought the same as well that I get that Lisa has been forgotten time and time again by Bart, but it just felt a bit much of going, well, I'm disowning you now. You're no longer my brother. It felt a bit over the, I get it. She's eight. I've got my, I wrote my notes. I understand she's over dramatic. She's eight years old. So you can understand an eight year old would feel this way. If an eight year old had their birthday forgotten, you can imagine they would respond this way, but it did feel like you're pushing. It's like, I I never got my sister a present when I was 10. My parents got a present for my sister. I helped pick it out or whatever, but expecting Bart to get her a present. But I guess she only wanted one, even if it was just made, but she just didn't really want, he didn't want to give her a present. Yeah. I realise that it has to happen for the uh, events of the story to unravel as they do, unfold as they do. It's almost like they had nothing to do, nothing for it to do. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So for her to be constantly pushing and almost you know, committing this emotional blackmail. Why don't you just shut up? There's a lot of shit going on. You got Michael Jackson coming to the house. <laughs> but did Marge and Homer forget as well? 
I don't think they did. Well, we never see them give her a present. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to remember the timeline of this episode. Or when, when is her actual birthday? It's when. It's not when they. It's when Leon shows up. I, I think. Well, it must be when he shows up. It's not the morning they sing the song. That's because it's late, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. It's the morning of the following day or something. I can't recall. I, I just know she's sitting at the um at the kitchen table crying. Yeah, at some point. Anyway, what were your favorite moments from the episode? <laughs> I think they were more Homer related than anything. Else. I've I've only written one here because obviously it was just enthralled with the episode, but I just love that. <laughs> That's one of my favorite gifts of all time. <laughs> <laughs> I did enjoy Homer watching funniest own videos. Yeah. <laughs> dog on fire! Dog on fire! Cracky up at dog on fire! Look at him! Yeah. <laughs> it's like the dog on fire. But uh, that was, that was there was once upon a time when a, a funniest own videos was a thing. Don't I know it? Yeah. Is yeah. this is it still? Uh, oh, I can't imagine because now it's just viral now, clips on, on the internet. Just, yes. Now it's but just it used TikToks. to be in Australia. You'd sit down seven thirty on a Tuesday and you'd watch Australia's funniest own videos. You would be told Australia, Australia. Yeah. This, this is you. Yeah. <laughs> this is you. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. So and, look at him. And he'd be so chuffed if like your favourite one. It's like they want a car at the end of the year. It's like, hey, our kid fell down the flight of stairs. You win a car. <laughs> <laughs> We're bringing, back, we're bringing back this season's champions. Remember, kid who fell downstairs? Fat guy on water slide. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I like that very much. I, lo- I loved Homer at the end. <laughs> um, uh, Michael Jackson, a.k.a. Leon, is made his impassioned speech about, you know, who can say who's crazy or not? Not me. I got this. Yeah. <laughs> he's got his uh, official very notification proud. that he's not crazy. Not I did insane. love the stamp as well. Yeah. Insane. <laughs> <laughs> The revelation, oh, the the reveal of Homer's test results, and he gets dragged off. <laughs> Smithers go, careful, man. He wets his pants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great callback to Bart. Filling it was, form, isn't it? <laughs> and the, the one thing, that, a line that I'd always remember, but I've forgotten, was from this episode. Was I think it's Kearney? <laughs> Don't show your face around here again, you tool. When is? Oh, that was Nelson. I was think. it Nelson? Yeah. yeah at, when. They realise that MJ isn't MJ. Had a different, uh, maybe, sort of pitch of voice. Did it? Okay. I'm yeah. pretty sure it was Nelson. I could be wrong. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, one of the boys. <laughs> Don't ever show your face around here again, you tool. Uh, I think, was Kearney an established bully at this point? I'm pretty sure the three bullies were Jimbo, Dolph, and Nelson. Could be, could well be Nelson. Yeah, yeah. I could be wrong. What else did you enjoy? You well, just had uh, the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just had the one. No worries. Shall we do some, uh, well, we've got some uh, stone cutters to mention, yes? We do indeed. All right, stone cutter time. We do love our stone cutters, our top tier supporters on Patreon here at Four Figure Discount. So let's start with the lovely Katie G. Troit with her one hundred dollars support. Thank you so much for supporting us. We do love you, Katie G. Troit. Thank you very much, Katie G. Andrew Zer with his fifty dollars support. Elliot Joe O'Neill from the Simpsons Index Podcast. We've got Zach Pruitt, our editor here at Four Finger Discount. We have Jordan Molman, Richie, Jonathan Rossi, Stephen Roberts, Sean Devey, Pete Anderson, Timothy Burleson, Andrew Davis, Ryan Dunlap, Kevin Denzel Plan Flood. Shannon Hofer, Bella Winderbank, Mark Boston Burgess, Jack McFadden, Heath Appleby, Adric McLeod, Lewis Kavanagh, Mark Trelevin, Reese Roberts, Ginger and Pickle, Preston Murray, Talia Enriquez, Jake Masado, Declan Phoenix, Brian McCoy, Josh Hallier, Logan B, James Shepard, Joe Redensek, ah, get my breath, <laughs> Dave Pretzels McNally, Gavin Lang, and Damien Miller. Thank you so much for being top tier Stonecutter supporters here at Four Finger Discount. Remember, if you do enjoy the show and you want to support us, you can do so for as little as one dollar. Does one dollar you do? Or you can chuck us a PayPal donation to Four Finger Discount at Outlook.com as well. If you don't want to support us on Patreon, just a one time donation, you also get your name read out on the show. Also, the following people joined the family or upgraded their tier this week Mr. Davis, we've got Sam Pappas, Nathan, Nathan Briggs, Sarah Clark Francis, Justin Parker, Mark Pompeo, Isabella Murphy, Jet Gurdam, Curb Stomper, and Charlie Machia. Absolute legends. Thank you so much for supporting us. Thank you very much, every single one of you. You're still getting used to the camera because you got to remember when you're giving a thumbs up to the camera, there's no audio coming through. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're introducing new... Technology. Aspects yeah. into this. I was used to audio, now it's video. I feel people like to watch podcasts a lot more now. I'm really curious as to how Pretzel's got his uh, nickname. Uh, well... Write in, simpsonsmailbag at gmail.com. Write in, Dave, we want to hear how you got your name. Also, if you want to write into our mailbag or just get in touch with us, it's simpsonsmailbag at gmail.com. But trivia questions, Mr. Davis. It's time for some trivia. What's your first first question? Oh, I'm going to go first. You are. Please recite to me the crusty hotline number. 1909, is it? Mm -hmm. 1900, 1909. OU clown. Mm -hmm, That's correct. I'm pretending I didn't know, but that's my first question. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) My first question then for you is, 
what does the sign at the New Bedlam Mental Asylum say? Oh. It's a sign on the wall as they're walking in. Mm. It says you have to be, you don't have to be crazy <laughs> to be committed, but, <laughs> but it, it helps. helps. Yes. Ah, right. <laughs> uh, in Lisa's poem, what kind of car hit Snowball? Chrysler? It was a Chrysler. Mm. I forgot that was in this episode. She lied. She, she lied. lied. <laughs> <laughs> I she died. I love Holmes as well. No deal. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it, no, it's, is it he lied, he lied, she died, she, she died. died. Yeah. Yeah. She died. She died. Oh, uh, you know the answer to this one, but read it out for me. The four dates. Brooke Shields, Diana Ross, Emmanuel Lewis, aka Webster, and Bubbles. And Bubbles, the monkey. Was he just the monkey? So what, the chimp? So did he just have a chimp following him around like Mr. Teeny? What was the deal with Bubbles? I've heard of Bubbles, but I wasn't old enough to sort of live through it. Yeah, I don't know if Bubbles accompanied MJ everywhere. But did he have him out in public, this monkey? I, I think if you went to Neverland... Yeah, you, never you, left. you, you, you would invariably... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you would invariably meet and probably interact with Bubbles. Just comes across like a guy who had so much money that he just didn't know what to do with it anymore. And he was just... What, so was it his case of he was trying to create a youth that he never got to live? That seemed I to be the thing, wasn't it? That seemed to be the armchair psychologist opinion. Because he had a shit upbringing. He had all the money in the world, yeah, but he was you not know, treated very nicely. You know that they're making this biopic about Michael Jackson, right? No. It's, yeah, just called Michael. and apparently Of course it is. Yeah. Just, uh, called, Matt, just called Matt. Arnold. Yeah. <laughs> Sly. <laughs> Uh, starring right. like his nephew or something like that as, oh, as young Michael. Wow. Okay. And so when's it set? Is it his whole life? I or? think it's his I think it's his whole life, but it is it's one of those ones like straight out of Compton or where the Jackson family is like the executive producer and it's like, okay, you've got the rights to the We're song. We're gonna rewrite history, everybody. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. We've got the rights to, we'll give you the rights to the songs, but in return you're gonna have to whitewash some of this uh, less savoury stuff perhaps or just you'll allude to it but uh, in, you know for the sake of like being upfront and honest but which is weird because I feel like they did the opposite for the Freddie Mercury Bohemian Rhapsody film they made him come across so much worse than what he actually was and like the the, the band split up and he wouldn't get back together and they, they wanted to do Live Aid and he didn't I'm thinking none of this happened why have you fabricated such bullshit yeah I don't know I mean I, I watched Bohemian Rhapsody once and I'm like I've got no desire to ever see this again so many people say to me I've had people say to me oh it's such a great story it's such a good film I didn't realise that happened I was like it didn't happen no yeah. none, none of this happened it's just I understand writer's licence but I don't know just maybe I watched that going Freddie Mercury comes across like a real douchebag like, <laughs> don't, don't you feel that he came across like a bit of a douche throughout a good portion of the, like, the last half of that movie I don't really recall that much of it in all, in all honesty I just it was like a huge craze for about six months wasn't it he won, what, did he win the Academy Award for he it he did yeah, yeah. Just, and I mean I like Rami Malek as an actor but it was bandwagon yeah big time so. because we all love Queen songs correct yeah uh, I've got one more final question for you okay. the Dalai Lama visited when 1952. One of your questions? Correct. <laughs> we just covered each other's questions. Indeed, indeed. But may I ask you one more? Yeah, do it. Do it. What is Leon Komposky's hometown? Brooklyn? Patterson, New Jersey. Patterson, New Jersey. All righty. So, the original air date of Stark Raving Dad was September 19th, 1991. Production code 7F24, written by Al Jean and Mike Reese, and directed by Rich Moore. Mm. The episode. Oh, we do have the chalkboard gag as well. I'm, I'm, we're so used to, we do season eighteen reviews now. There's no chalk gag and all that kind of stuff. But the chalkboard gag. I am not a dentist. And the couch gag. The couch tips over backwards, sending the Simpsons family through the wall. I love that's just a fairly old school, not elaborate couch gag. It's just like back to the, the basics, couch and something happens. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Even just the couch gags like this. Yeah, they take me back because when you do season eighteen, it just doesn't feel the same. No. <laughs> but the episode <laughs> kicks off with Lisa waking up Bart which is what he does at the end of the, of the episode. She wakes him up at 6 a.m. <gasps> Something's happened. Dad died. And he's actually, I can't believe he's actually relieved. Hey, what do you know? I'm dead. relieved. Yeah. yeah, but it's almost Lisa's birthday and she's worried about becoming double digits. And as Bart says, you know, that's when your legs start to go and candy doesn't taste as good anymore. <laughs> 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 and he's always, um, he sh she says that he's always disappointed her and he finally gives in and says that he will get her a present. And I do agree. It's just the pressure to be given a present felt unlisa like It did, didn't it? Yeah. It's, uh, she seems like it, someone who should be I don't need physical objects yeah make a donation to you know Peter Peter mm. yes. you know, feed a starving child but Marge asks Bart in the kitchen to watch Maggie while she goes and gets some laundry 
He calls the Krusty hotline, doesn't pay any attention. If you haven't asked your parents, naughty, naughty, naughty. but Krusty <laughs> forgives you. <laughs> By the way, how, how long was the fir- how much for the first minute and how much for each additional minute? It was $2 for the first and then 50 cents after, I'm pretty sure. There's no beating you. No. No. Uh, it's just, yeah, photographic memory. But the thing is, <laughs> it took me back. I've got in my notes here, hotlines take me back. Remember when hotlines, for me, it was um, cheats for, for video games. Call this hotline and for $5 a minute, we can tell you how to enter this combo for Eddie Gordo on Tekken 3. Did you ever call up any hotlines or things like that? For me, it was phone sex. Okay, yeah. Well, I still do that. Does phone, does phone sex still exist in I'm sure it does. You reckon? I guess it must. I'm sure there's like an app for it or something, but I can't yeah. imagine there's 1-900, call me. Call me now. They always say that, didn't they? Call me now. We're waiting for your call. And it's probably like some seven-year-old chick oh, yeah. just got a really hot voice. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Oh, what are you wearing? <laughs> oh, hotlines. But, uh, you know, uh, Krusty just laughs for the entire time, makes his money. Call back tomorrow, and then Maggie grabs the fan. Not on like podcasts. No, Marge. Gra- Maggie grabs the fan. Marge walks in, and sees it. She overpowered me. Then Homer needs his shirt for work, and unfortunately, they're all pink. And it's also Bart's fault with the lucky red hat. Indeed. Quick question: Did Homer always have that hairy chest? Um, yeah, it's, it's always been curly. Yeah, yeah. I just never picked up on it. No, this is the first time I thought. I always thought Homer was just like smooth chested. No, in the early days, anyway, he always had the, the, the curly hairs on his chest. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I don't remember seeing it in this episode, but that's what he usually used to, looks like anyway. But I love the line here of, I'm not popular enough to be different. <laughs> that's so true in many aspects. When you're growing up, you just, I can't be different. You, only the cool kids can be quirky. Have you ever worn a pink shirt? Yeah, I own several pink shirts. Yeah. Pur- purple. Do you recall the first time that, I mean, was there ever any sort of trepidation about the first time you put one on? I remember the first time I put, wore it out to a nightclub. And I was very anxious, yeah. but I thought I looked good. But I thought, if someone comments on this, it's going to break me. I'm going to go home straight away. I'm going to go home and burn it. Yes. Yeah. But the, the straight away, I remember these two girls. Emily, I won't say her last name. This is her last name. Emily Radikowski. and Kate. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Emily and Kate said, oh, nice shirt. And I remember at first thinking, are they taking the mickey? This is genuine. And then... I realised they weren't. I won't explain how. <laughs> <laughs> when they ripped it off my body. They yeah, didn't. but then I realised, oh no, it's okay. And it was, because even 15 years ago, wearing a pink shirt was, uh, now it's whatever. You can wear, you can wear no shirt to a nightclub. But <laughs> you feel like you look good, but you're scared to see what people, what other people think. That's correct. Which, when you shouldn't, you should feel, if you feel comfortable, you should just wear it. It depends on your colouring as well. Yeah. I mean, What uh, shade of pink? Yeah, well, the lovely Louise has often told me, it's like, colour's not really you. Yeah, what colour is that? Anything that's like anything that's not black, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> anything outside black, 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 grey, or blue. Uh, no, because I mean, I'm I am kind of partial to purple. I don't. I think it's. I I like wearing it. Not not necessarily. You know, an all purple outfit. I'm not Prince. <laughs> that was Michael Jackson. What am I talking about? Um, but uh, we we'll get to Prince a little bit later in the show. We will right? indeed. I recall we were at some shop and I was like, oh, I really like this polo shirt in this colour. I don't know how many times I've told you, this is not your colour. It does not suit your personal colouring. Is it, but is it that she doesn't think you look good in it? Or is it that most people will think you Her look opinion good in it? is the only one that matters. Yeah, yeah you're to supposed me. to be looking, trying to look good for one person, aren't you, I guess, aren't you? That is correct. And it's yourself, Guy Davis. You feel like you look good in purple? Wear damn purple. I will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to buy you a purple shirt for your birthday. I've got a Wayne's World shirt that's purple and I've had it since. I reckon I was 17. It still fits me. Mm-hmm. It's one of those shirts where I judge whether I need to lose some weight. If I put this shirt on, it's too tight. I'm like, all right, I need to lose a bit of weight. I've told you, we've talked about the aspirational shirt. Yeah, yeah. In the past. I, my fit into mine now. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice one. See, I, I put it on a couple of weeks ago. I wore it to pick up Ali and I thought, still I'm, got I'm, it. Still got it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I said, still got it and it referred to my gut. <laughs> no, you're looking great. You're looking, you're looking really, really good. Uh, yeah, so basically, Homer's shirt is now pink. It's all over, Marge. It's all over. <laughs> and then uh, he's revealed here that it was, the, it was Bart's hat, as we said. Marge says, no one's going to notice. I really like the scene, the shot here of him walking in with all the workers all yeah. wearing white. Mm-hmm. And he's wearing the pink. And Burns is not a fan of it at all, is he? Some sort of free-thinking anarchist. Yes, yeah, one of your boobs <laughs> from Sector 7G. Yes. And these color monitors are paid for themselves. Then Lenny gives Homer a, a pink frosting donut and they're just hanging shit. And you can imagine this is what it would happen in a factory. Or a, oh, yeah. yeah. Wearing a pink shirt, not not cool. Doesn't make him a pink donut either. No, no, but he does like it though. He does love pink frost. Pink frost. Are you a chocolate donut or a pink donut? I was always chocolate as a kid. I'm pink all the way now. I think I would be a pink donut guy. Yeah, maybe it's the Simpsons influence. I don't know, but I prefer when it comes to sweets, strawberry, like pink is 
I'm mm. over chocolate any day of the week for me. Having said that, a combination of the two is very nice. I mean, did you ever, I think our American friends call it Bisquick, but we call it Quick. Oh, Quick, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You combined the two flavours. I combined uh, chocolate and strawberry. Was that amazing? It's pretty damn nice. Did you ever get banana? Banana was like the one that you got if, you, if everyone else was running out. This is what I'm about <laughs> to say. I'm very partial to banana flavouring. I think I'll you may have said this, you're the, you're the kid that liked the weird things. Yeah. Because no one ate banana quick. You went yeah. to your friend's house and they had banana, said, banana? <laughs> yeah, or banana Big M. Yeah, no. Yeah, and I was at the uh, the NQR. I went there with Elliot maybe three days ago. He was in heaven. He walked in, he goes, look at all these lollies. And I was I like, know. look at all these low, low prices. <laughs> <laughs> well, at, uh, we, we would have gone to the same NQR. It's just yeah. around the corner from uh, from Dando's pad. If you do live around here, they've got $3 lint bunnies, which are perfect for Easter time. That is correct. <laughs> Friend of the pot, <laughs> NQR. Um, the other thing they had, though, and while I am trying to be on something about health kick, I thought this is too good to pass up because it's not something that you often see in Australia. And even beyond that, it's kind of like a... At an affordable price as yeah, well. It's a variant of... I love the when they get the, the US of variants and shit, yeah. It was banana-flavoured Twinkies. Ooh. I still wouldn't eat it, but I can imagine you would have loved it. I bought the box. The whole they, box, yeah. Is it, no, no. I'm, yeah. Uh, well, they, they weren't selling them individually. Oh, okay. Yeah, you had to get a box of 10. I'm like... You feel like an absolute boss when you just drop the box on the counter too. You're like, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to me. <laughs> Give it to me, babe. Because Nicola, uh, she loves these protein bars and they usually cost $6 each right at the supermarket. They've got them for $1.50 each. What? I bought three boxes of them. What? $1.50. <laughs> they all went out date like six months ago, but it's still $1.50. <laughs> <laughs> there's, I think apparently there's a difference between the best before date and the use yeah, by date. Use by, don't go past that. Best before, yeah, that's fine. Just... <laughs> Blow it a bit, it'll be fine. <laughs> Blow the dust off. When you get that chocolate, just scrape the little white bits off it. Lou was cleaning out her cupboards not long ago. I think I might have told this story. And, you know, you double up on various things. Like, oh, I'm out of so-and-so oil. Oh, wait a minute. There were actually three bottles way back in the cupboard. We were cleaning out of the cupboard. And there was, I think we did like maybe four, four or five big garbage bags of just like, uh, this past it's used by data, whatever. And there was some where it's like, I think that's the best before. She said, I'm throwing it out. We'll say, well, maybe I'll take that back to mine. Yeah. <laughs> I took like a big bag of um, stuff that had best before or was just past its use by day. Like, I'll use this the next couple of days. She was looking at me like I was some kind of freak. <laughs> <laughs> I had a good memory as you were talking then. of I very rarely seen my mum drunk. I was just speaking of things sort of like in, in the back of a closet. And my mum used to have this, is it port? Like port? Oh, yeah. One, but it was a Geelong Cats football one, right, that she got... Just as a present when I was born, right? Someone said, and they said, when the cats win the flag, you can drink this, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, the Geelong Cats in the AFL here were in the 89, 92, 94, 95 grand final. Never won them. So it just sat and it used to sit on the, on the bench at our house for years, decades, right? <laughs> and I'll never forget in 2007 when the Cats won the grand final. And I said, mum, you can drink that port now. And just seeing mum get drunk on this port was just like such a great memory. It was like, <laughs> mum's finally getting, she finally gets to drink this yeah. port. <laughs> like 19 years later, she's finally drinking this port. Yeah. Oh dear, port. I can't drink it anymore. No. I, I got absolutely shit faced on it like New Year's Eve around maybe 1989 or something. Mm -hmm. And maybe it was the same, same batch. It could have been. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I forgot where I was, but I was at like some event. And they were like little shot glasses of port, you know, because you don't have it in big glasses. You have it like a, it's mm. a fortified one. You have yeah. little, little bits of it. And I had like maybe six or seven, maybe more. Mum had a Sharon size drink of it. <laughs> <laughs> and I just got, I, I ended up ushering in the new year out in the garden, just puking my guts out. Don't let mum see him. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I have not drunk port since. Yeah, okay. But Homer here, basically, they're, they're saying he's crazy. You know, well, why would he, well, there must be something to him? Well, what, what's your angle, basically? Why would you be wearing a pink shirt? And um, and what they, but I think Smithers here was like, no, we've, we've done the full search, and I, th I think he's, I think he's fine. And the X-ray, he's not uh, hiding anything. But then he accuses Smithers of being in cahoots mm. with um with Homer. So like, because you know, he's got the bell bottom pants. That's right. Yes, <laughs> that was. When he was in the Gilbert and Sullivan play, uh, HMS Pinafore. That's yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the spirited hornpipe stole the show. But then we get an appearance from Doctor Marvin from Monroe. Monroe. Yeah, I forgot that he was in this episode, and he says that um, <laughs> it used to take months to find out if someone was insane, but now thanks to what? Oh, I forgot. What, it's it's the, his it's take home personality test. That's right. Yeah, I knew it was the test. I forgot the, yeah. the actual name of it. Answer twenty questions and determine how crazy or Meshuggah, Meshuggah, <laughs> someone is. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love it when normally crusty is the mouthpiece for wonderful expressive Yiddish terms, but I, I like it when someone else gets to throw one in. But then he asked Marge to fill in the forms because she won't do it. Then he asked Lisa, and this is where we get the whole <laughs> <laughs> is it was it meditations of an eight year old or thoughts of an eight year old basically her poem and it, it had meditations yeah. I think you know ruminations or something terribly pretentious. Yeah. I once had a cat. Her cat went so warm. She died. She died. <laughs> Mum told me she was sleeping. She lied. <laughs> she lied. No dear. <laughs> Homer just bowing there. It's just the perfect. <laughs> no dear. <laughs> now, can you say no deal now without doing the X? No deal. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can. Um, people people on the deal or no deal show just love doing it. No oh, yeah. deal. <laughs> Look, absolute champion. Uh, by the way, this is a, an audio thing, but we were actually doing the no deal. No deal. Yeah. No deal. So he asked Bart here. Bart's not sure. It's not like the, that time he let me vote for you. Then Homer watches Funny Stone videos as Bart's doing it. And baby with a nail gun, <laughs> dog on fire. Dog on fire. <laughs> dog on fire. Look at him. <laughs> Just says yes to everything here. And unfortunately, he does not pass the test. And so this careful man. He wets his pants. <laughs> so good. He's then taken to New Bedlam, uh, the mental asylum. Is that, are you allowed to say that these days? Mental asylum? Mental hospital? I think it's mental hospital. Is it even, are you going to say mental hospital? Well, it is for your mental health. Yeah, that is true. Mental health hospital, maybe. Yeah. yeah. It's the rest home for the emotionally interesting, apparently. That's what the science says. <laughs> Lovely euphemism. They show him the uh, the ink spots and the boy, the boy. the boy. That's actually a great payoff letter. There is a Bart? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but they stamp his hand. He's insane. And whoever has this stamp is insane. <laughs> then he's thrown in with the big white guy who thinks he's a little black yeah. guy. And Q, Michael Jackson. Jackson. Mm. Well, I'm Homer Simpson from The Simpsons. Homer doesn't know who Michael Jackson is, unfortunately. Though. He does the Billie Jean dance. Nup does the moonwalk. What's that thing? And, um, you know, what, what were you throwing in for? For wearing one white glove covered in rhinestones. <laughs> 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 and the kids are now watching Itchy and Scratchy. It is banging the cat slowly. Um, I've got here. They show the kids laughing at it. They looked hideous. The animation here was oh, okay. really terrible. It's worth going back. If you can find access to this episode... Check out Spart and Lisa laughing at this scene. It's really bad. It just looks like a... You know when they said in the earlier episodes where they said they, they had to delete or like they had to go back and reanimate yeah, some of the episodes? Right. It was Some Enchanted Evening. It felt like the animation from that is really, really bad. But Lisa hints here that she, you know, what about that present? And as Bart says, you want that once a year empty gesture? You've got it. <laughs> and I guess that's what a lot of it is, isn't it? Oh, it's your birthday. I better get you a present. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. But then we're at the mental health hospital. And he introduces Frank the Idiot. Oh, he's an idiot savant. Idiot savant, yeah. Yes. That's a term that's sort of fallen out of favour. Mm, yes. And five by nine. <laughs> five by nine. <laughs> wow. What? And then we get the chief. Who's the chief from, Mr Davis? Uh, the chief is from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Mm. Uh, Been there since 1968. <laughs> <laughs> no one else getting anything. Yeah. <laughs> that time somebody reached out to me. Yeah. Uh, I think there there is another... It's not an not as obvious uh, Cuckoo's Nest reference, but mm. there is someone a little bit later who looks like Jack Nicholson as McMurphy from... Uh, really? Well, it's... Um, Just sitting in the hospital? No, no. It's like, they're asking, I think Homer's asking, how do I get out of here? Yeah, there's one way. Dating the nurse. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he looks a bit like Jack Nicholson. Does he? Okay. Yeah. And that nurse doesn't look too bad. She probably... You have to be tough to work in a place like that, though, I'd imagine. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I mean, you uh, get a lot of shit thrown at you and just, yeah. L literally and metaphorically. <laughs> 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 but he calls home. What are the other places on the um, on the speed dial, did you see? I did. Oh, Larry King Show. Oprah. Geraldo. Uh, Geraldo. Yeah. And then it just said, um, and, Phil Donahue yeah. and Ski Report. Why Ski Report? That I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure there's a joke there somewhere that I've missed. But um, he's too embarrassed, of course, to get Michael to, to, to call for him. And Bart does not believe it at all. Oh, yeah, sure, is Elvis with you? Mm -hmm. That's always been the thing, isn't it? Uh, Elvis is still alive. That's sort of the, it's still to this day used. Two, two, Tupac and, and Elvis, they're the two ones. Yeah, I mean, there was that whole thing about Paul McCartney is dead and Elvis is still alive. People actually believe Paul McCartney's dead. That's wild to me. That they believe that Paul McCartney's an, impost an, an imposter. Yeah. So what? weird. He's there. <laughs> <laughs> He's simply having a wonderful Christmas time. Yeah. All the time. <laughs> Not a huge fan of that song, though. I like it. Mm, just felt it's very... So it just, it, it, you listen to it and you go, Paul was just trying to make money with this. He's like, I'm going to write a Christmas jingle. You just put that in there to be commercial. Yeah. Well, how many times have I said, though, that's we should do that. We should knuckle down and write a Christmas song and then we're just on easy street. Forever. Yeah. Man, Mariah Carey. What a resurgence she's had. Every every uh, December twenty five. Yes, well, it's December first. She cracks out of the ice. That's right. 
Uh, but he wants him to stay on the line whilst he goes and tells his friends and family. But he says, you know, you, you better not. And then, he, but what does he say? You don't want your dad to have a little bottomy. You, you want your dad mm. out of here, surely, right? Basically, Homer's like, he's worried he's never going to get out of here. He reassures Homer, don't worry. Um, you, you will get out. You only want to get out, as he said. Deep in the Norris. Norris. Deep wise guy voice. It's a little wise guy voice. I think, it was, yeah. I think it was wise guy voice, yeah. Also trying to put that Nicholsonian sneer in there. Yeah. Yeah. Norris. yeah. Uh, Marge says that I told you one day you send dad to the crazy house poor house crazy house poor house <laughs> he's ashamed to admit to to MJ that he's scared that's a big deal for a guy even to this day to admit that they're scared oh very much so yeah because we're just we're raised to think you've got to be tough and strong and I don't think I've ever I've seen my dad cry once and it was when a family member passed away but did you ever see Bobby cry very often I, not, not very often once yeah yeah and, and that I, was that was very bracing yeah I do, I, do, I do like the idea though of like Homer Admitting to another guy, I'm, I'm scared. You know, he obviously is scared. He's never going to get out. And this is where Leon slash MJ sings Ben or Homer. Mm-hmm. I've always liked this. Homer. <laughs> it's just it's a nice little spin on it. But then pancakes, football. This slayed in my household when I was a kid. Boobies. <laughs> 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 and bubbles is going to be a long night. Then it's time for a therapy session. And we've got Dave here who suffers from agoraphobia. <laughs> Just baby. <laughs> Smoking in group therapy as well. It's like yeah. the nineties were a magical time. Yeah, Marge pleads to the doc, you know, don't just don't mention Bart. There really is a Bart? Good lord. Marge is very well dressed when yeah. she's picking up uh, when she's pleading her case. It's like she's going to prison. Yeah. Prison wife. <laughs> <laughs> but she embraces Homer. And he's revealed here that he's not a threat to yourself or others. I want that in writing, please. <laughs> they give him the not insane uh was it d- d- Certificate? D- diploma? Diploma, yeah. yeah. And Michael says that he can come home as well because he's only there voluntarily. Because he was sad when in 1979 he's off the wall uh, record only one or was nominated for one lousy Grammy. That yeah. sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. Is, that, uh, is that true? Should we look it up? Off the wall. I feel, I feel like off the wall like won everything. It's just it's so renowned. But well, it's got rock with you on it, which is you know, one of my favourite Michael Jackson what's, what's the other one? Um, Want to be starting something? Oh, that's on Thriller, is no. it? Or is it on Bad? Blame it on the boogie. That's off the wall, right, isn't it? think so or is yeah is that just a michael song or is it a jackson's song? oh you could be right there off the wall let's get the track listing for off the wall it's his mm. first album i remember having it only it um track listing scroll down to the bottom god damn there's a lot of information about it. don't stop till you get enough that's what i'm thinking of <laughs> ah. don't stop till you got rock with you working day and night off the wall girlfriend she's out of my life it's falling in love that's the they're the singles that were released from it yeah i'm the same i'm a mom samakusa great record mm. and then it was <laughs> dun, dun. <laughs> Thr- thriller just changed everything, right? Thriller changed a lot of things. Yeah, it was particularly like music videos, yeah, didn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, wasn't it an event to actually see the full? It video? was an event to watch the making of Thriller. Really? Yeah, yeah that's pretty cool. Mm. That really spawned MTV, didn't it? Or was MTV a thing before that? MTV was a thing before that, but I think certainly you took you took music videos thriller, to strange places. Yeah, just sort of. <laughs> yeah, it's like oh, we can make movies out of this now. Yeah, but yeah. So back home though, so they're all happy at the at the um at the mental health hospital but back home Lisa is sad she's singing happy birthday to herself and overlooked middle child and you do feel bad for her that they've forgotten her on her birthday but you there's know, a lot going on yeah there is a lot going on still it's your daughter <laughs> <laughs> but then we get uh, they call home Joe's taxidermy you snuff them we stuff them I feel like you couldn't say we snuff them anymore could you I just don't think you could right on a kids show we snuff them uh, or you I, snuff them I, I think it's a perfectly acceptable uh, alternative term yeah maybe alright but he pretends. Um, so, but this is basically Homer calling up home, and he threatens Bart. But then he pretends he's being nice when the doc's mm-hmm. looking. Hey, what's going on here? Then he says he's bringing Michael Jackson home to so make sure there's plenty of cold cuts and beer on ice. But unfortunately, <laughs> he's a vegetarian. Are you sure you're here voluntarily? <laughs> I'm a vegetarian and I don't drink. Yes, promises not to tell anybody, but he can't help it. So he just tells. He just tells Milhouse. That's, that's he tells Milhouse. Yeah. Like a, who's he? Gonna, who does he know? Who's Milhouse know? <laughs> and of course, it spreads all the way through. Even to the uh, a bulletin on KBBL Radio, and they're going to play an extra long version of Inagata De Vida. Is that so they can go out and see Michael? I think, think it must be. Inagata De Vida is already long. Yes, so the extra long, long version. version. Yes. So that's what they. That's what Bart uses in Bart Sells His Soul, by the way. Because remember, it was In the Garden yes. of Eden we, by we, I Run we, Butterfly. <laughs> Great song. Yes. Apu then closes uh, for the first time ever. So clearly, it's a big deal here in Springfield that Michael Jackson is coming to town. Bart then overhears the helicopter over the over the house, and the mayor announces that they're going to be announcing the new expressway, the Michael Jackson Expressway. <laughs> and Mike- so, so this is post bad, but pre dangerous. Dangerous was eighties, wasn't it? I thought it. I thought it went thriller, bad, dangerous. Um, what Michael, is black and white? Michael Jackson albums. Black or white? Let's have a look. 
So Dangerous was ninety one. Yeah. So same year ish. Okay. Yeah. Well, this what what when when in ninety one did it come out? I think, uh, I think uh, 26 of November, so this air before Dangerous. Yeah. yeah. So, the, so Thriller was... Oh, I was 80. I thought Thriller was 80. Okay, so 82. Bad was 87. Yeah. yeah. What was the one that had him... Like, the, is it History? Where he's like a statue on the front? Yeah, and that's like mid-90s, isn't it? That's the one that I remember the most as a kid because all the singles when I was growing up on video hits used to put the, the album cover next to the okay. song title. I think that was like... You and I alone. And what was it? Earth Song on that one? Oh, yeah. Let's remember the time on I think I remember the time Make as well. Make it a better place. <laughs> God, I haven't thought about that song for so long. Heal the world. Make it a better place <laughs> for you and for me. Great guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll be joking. Maybe not the best babysitter. No, apparently not, no. But they all think Michael Jackson's going to be coming to Springfield, though. Leon gets out of the car and they realise, oh, he's 300 pounds, he's white, he's, he's, he's dressed without flair. flair. <laughs> <laughs> All things that have been levelled at yours truly. Yes. <laughs> Everyone then uh, leaves and... Uh, no, they, they Bart gets a punch to have a show your face around here again, you tool. Yeah, then Lisa asks about the present and she's afraid to ask. He's like, you should trust your instinct on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so she basically is going to just delete him from her life. She's very sad about this. Homer tries washing off the stamp but it's not coming off and Michael overhears Lisa writing the letter to Bart. And I think she says something like your brother, my brother and sister in name only. I thought that's a bit dramatic, <laughs> but I guess she's eight, eight year old. <laughs> yes, eight year old. But he goes and tells Bart, you know, let's go write a song to show that to show that you care. You know, when when I was your age, I had six gold records. He's like, you're actually fucking crazy. <laughs> 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 like, no, you didn't. And uh, basically, what was what is it that makes him think? No, no what, it's the th- it's a threat of not. He's like, he goes, you could not write a, pre- a song mm. for your sister, or you could take advantage of potentially having Michael Jackson here. And he's like. Michael, yeah, it's like you just wanted to believe. It's kind of like when you, you know Santa and things. Like sometimes you just choose to believe. It's like when you uh, clap your hands to say you believe in fairies to bring Tinkerbell back to life. Have you ever done that? I think I did it once. It, did it work? It, it did on yeah, it actually did. You know when you're a kid though, and you know it's not true. And we discussed this on South Park. We did. You know it's not real. But there's still that fear of saying Bloody Mary three times in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> you have to sleep right over there's that one kid that's going to do it. You're like, don't do it. He's a bad man. <laughs> you said Candyman four times. Yeah. Don't, do it. don't do it again. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> but they, uh, he writes the, the gasoline song about Lisa. Her name is Lisa. Yeah. And that's obviously not going to go down well. So they go to look at Lisa. <laughs> she looks sad. She, oh, she's just she, she knows we're looking at her. <laughs> but she still would have been sad. But then they write the song. I really call me crazy, but I really love the training wheels come off yeah. your bike. Da da da, about the boys you like, whatever. I was like, even that is like a jingle. Like <laughs> Michael Jackson just had it, man. Indeed, and b- b- even if he get, does throw in a <laughs> yeah to be commercial, it's yeah, all be, right. That's fine. Yeah, so that was his thing. But they enter Lisa's room the following morning, and they sing one of my favorite Simpsons songs of all time, "The Happy Birthday, Lisa." And just I always had this thing when I was a kid. I always said that when my sister gets married, I'm gonna I was gonna sing. Stacy, it's your wedding. <laughs> I was going to like change the words for that. That was always my thing. Stacy, get married so I can do it, please. <laughs> Stacy's getting married. Yeah, it's, it's, it's such a happy song. Someone's marrying Stacy. Yeah. And he just, wish you love and goodwill. What a, <laughs> I, love, I love that song. I, I know it's deleted and you're not supposed to like it. groomed children, apparently. Well, that's the, that's the belief. There's no Michael proof. Jackson. But Michael Jackson. <laughs> yeah, but I do, um, I do love that song. Homer's still sleeping. You know he's slipping with his not insane award? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Next to him. And they thank Michael. This is where his voice changes and he reveals that he's actually Leon Kompowski from Patterson New. Joyce. Joyce. And to make a tire point, which one of us is crazy? Not oh, me. Which, yeah. I got this. And you're a credit to dementia. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, yes, uh, the voice has now switched to Hank Azaria. Is it Hank now? Ah. It, Hank is doing Leon Yes, doing Leon's voice. Yes. Okay, there we go. And that's the end of the episode. Yeah. As he's singing the, Lisa, it's your, your birthday. birthday. Yeah. And they have a actual version of the song over the closing credits as well. They do indeed, but probably still sung by, what's his name? Kip Lemon. Kip yeah. Lemon. Yeah. I love this episode. I'll always love this episode. It's a shame that it's not existing anymore in the, um, you know, in streaming or whatever. Understandable, but if you can, go get a DVD or access it and find it, find, find access to it somehow because it's, it's great. Mm, it's, a, it's a great use of a guest star. It's so weird, isn't it? It is indeed, yeah. I don't think it's anything that anyone was expecting at all. Least, no. le- least of all Matt Groening when he was working late at the office, office yeah. that night and got a call from Michael Jackson. And Michael Jackson didn't even use his name in the credits. He's referred to as John J. Smith, not the initial J, the word J-A-Y. I wonder if they marketed, at the time, because obviously it wasn't there, but did they market Michael Jackson's going to be on The Simpsons 
but then did the did the viewers feel cheated because they didn't if you were just watching the show and you didn't go on you couldn't go online but if you didn't watch the news and find out that michael jackson actually did the voice if they said michael jackson's coming to the simpsons and you saw that ad as a kid and then you realized it wasn't michael jackson would you have felt cheated do you think as a viewer because he wasn't even listed in the credits. I think the people at Simpsons HQ were probably working overtime. Certainly the marketing department to let you know. It's like, yes, it's billed as John J. Smith, but we all know who it is, right? We all know that Sam Etik is Dustin Hoffman, and we all know that John J. Smith is MJ. Yeah, yeah. yeah look, it, it is sad that this, uh, this episode has been quote-unquote cancelled or memory hold or what have you. It's also sad that we didn't get the proposed sequel. I know. That would episode. have been awesome. So it was Prince... That's who they had in mind. Liam's going to return as Prince. What's the actual story of the episode, though? They do have it somewhere listed online, but basically, I I remember reading going, this just feels like a rehash. It felt, from what I understand, it seemed kind of strange that Leon came back to Springfield and now he was more like Prince. He sort of had a more of a Prince identity than a Michael Jackson identity. Surely everyone and, remembers him, though, from the yeah, first time. And basically wanted Springfield to sort of loosen up and be love sexy in the Prince vein. It's like... I don't know, this feels pretty thin. This uh, a, even though, was it Conan O'Brien who wrote the script? Was it Conan, was it? I think Conan either wrote it or worked on it. Let's go, there's going to be a proposed sequel somewhere on the... Um, yeah. I produce sequels. A year after Stark Raving Dad aired, the writers planned a sequel in which Kampowski would return, this time claiming to be the pop star Prince. The script was written by freelancers and polished by Conan O'Brien. Mm, got that Conan polish. Yeah, according to Mike Reese. It saw Kampowski encourage the Springfield residents to loosen up, become more flamboyant, and become more sexually open. Prince agreed to voice Kampowski and sent notes about what his character would wear, but the writers discovered that Prince was referring to a script that had been written by his chauffeur. So he must have rewrote the script. Prince disliked their script and demanded the other one be used, but the writers refused. The script became one of the few unproduced Simpsons scripts. Following Prince's Mm. death in 2016, showrunner Al Jean posted two screenshots of scenes from the script. There needs to be like a museum for Simpsons stuff like that. Oh, God. It'd, it'd be like the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> just this warehouse full of Unproduced stuff. golden era Simpsons episode. Yeah. Absolutely. But I am on Prince's side. I'm going to say that I wouldn't have bought into that either. That seems very thin, as you said, and a rehash of the original yeah. one. It, hey, he returns as a different... But everyone... He's just been here. Everyone knows he's not Michael Jackson. Is it just that everyone going, oh, just let Leon be Leon? No, that's... Seems- yeah, I think Leon left Springfield, not under a cloud, but I think the residents of Springfield kind of like, ah, oh, we were shortchanged by this guy. Yeah, actually, I guess the residents of Springfield don't know that he wasn't real, do they? Only the Simpsons know that. Oh, yeah. Because then he came clean to the Simpsons family. Oh, yeah, good point. I mean, they... No, well, that's, that's a whole new can of worms. The only way, Al Jean, for us to know this mm-hmm. is to release the entire script. We need to see it. Both scripts. The, the only way that we can be sure about this is for Al Jean to come on Four Finger Discount and talk about it. That's with exactly us. right. Al, Mr. Jean, please. Mr. Jean, come on. Come on the show and, and let's talk about it. Yeah, yeah, it'll be great. We want to compare scripts. Oh, I'd love to compare Prince's script, his chauffeur script. <laughs> it'll be his chauffeur, right? <laughs> script. I reckon that's fantastic. But, you know, Prince's. <laughs> Who yeah. knows Prince better than that guy, though? He drives Driving around, around all the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Prince is a pretty bit of an odd, no, not an oddball, but I mean, he showed up on New Girl. Yeah. yeah that, I, he just did his own thing, man. Yeah. I'd love to hear, what's, what songs do you reckon? They would have used oh. Purple Rain. Purple Rain's the big one, right? I imagine so, yeah. Although, Prince, probably being a pretty savvy businessman, what was it, what, what did he release around? Raspberry Beret was the late 80s, No, wasn't that was it? late 80s. I think we were sort of, we're not in the My Name is Prince era. 99, 99 we're, was we're in the 70s, wasn't it? Yeah, we're in the Diamond and Pearls era. Yeah. We're in cream and cream. What a and song! So dope. <laughs> I need to find the um, the quote because Prince was just full of these great quotes. I need to find. Oh, I remember when he passed and they announced it on the radio. I pulled over. I was like, "Wow!" Like that affected me. I the three that said it affected me are Prince, David Bowie, and Robin Williams. I just they stopped me in my tracks. Oh yeah, yeah. and it's always weird when you sort of. It happens in the middle of your day. Like, you don't wake up to that news. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think I was on social media and started, well, yeah, Matthew Perry was a recent one. That's a big one, yeah. Heath, Heath Ledger, that was kind of like, mm-hmm. yeah, you hear it, Heath Ledger's dead? I, I, sorry, I need to find this quote. From Prince. From Prince and, him. hang on, Prince and Matt Damon. Is the quote just green? <laughs> <laughs> the headline is, Prince had no time for Matt Damon's pedestrian small talk. Couldn't sanction his buffoonery. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> 
What were they working on together? This was just at a party. Oh, okay. Here it is. Uh, this is a quote from Julia Stiles, who co-starred with yeah. them in the Bourne movies. After the Bourne Ultimatum came out, there was a premiere in London. Prince actually came to it, then got tickets for the cast to come see him perform. We were summoned into a room to meet him after the show. Matt said, so you live in Minnesota? I hear you live in Minnesota. Damon. Prince said, I live inside my own heart, Matt Damon. <laughs> <laughs> Most people would be just like, yeah, wow, sure, yeah, I'm yeah. talking to Matt Damon. Uh, Prince is just like, I live inside my own heart. <laughs> no, God is, damn, what, what a lord. What does Damon say back to that? <laughs> what do you do? Nice neighbourhood. Yeah. <laughs> good, uh, What's good, the weather like? Good, 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 good uh, school catchment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, but yeah, so the unproduced sequel, that's a, it's a real shame because, yeah, I mean, the, the, the story is... Um, it's kind of bleak if you ask me, but we don't know the full story, obviously, the full um, premise of the episode. But it would have been nice to have had Prince on the on the Simpsons at some point. It, it certainly would have. It'd be still it'd be nice to have Prince still with us, in oh, all honesty. Exactly. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. The man just burned out rather than faded away. This was also the episode that had the rerun. When or when it was rerun, had the, the George Bush saying that you should be more like the Waltons and less like the Simpsons. That's correct, yes. Yeah, so January thirtieth, nineteen ninety two, rerun of the episode featured a brief alternate opening. Which was written, I oh know, so it was written in response to him saying that. So it was written in response to a comment made by the then President George W. Bush Sr. Three days earlier, the show had previously had a feud with the President's wife, Barbara Bush, when in the October 1st, 1990 edition of People, she called The Simpsons the dumbest thing she'd ever seen. The writers decided to respond by privately sending a pol- polite letter to Bush in which they posed as Marge Simpson. Bush immediately sent a reply in which she apologised. Later on January 27th, 1992, George Bush made a speech during his re-election campaign which included the statement, we're going to keep trying to strengthen the American family, make it uh, families a lot more like the Waltons, less like the Simpsons. The writers wanted to respond quickly as Barbara Bush had to them. As each episode of The Simpsons takes more than six months to produce, it is difficult to for the show to com- uh, com- uh, comment on current events. The writers decided to add a brief response to the next broadcast of The Simpsons, a rerun of Stark Grabbing Dad this episode on January 30th. Nancy Cartwright, the voice of Bart, was called in to record a line. The broadcast included... A new tongue-in-cheek opening, the scene from the episode Simpson and Delilah, begins in the Simpsons' living room where the family is watching Bush's speech, but replies, hey, we're just like the Waltons, we're praying for an end to the Depression too. And that, <laughs> and that opening is featured on the Season 4 DVD box set. Oh, that's actually pretty clever. Yes. Well, the Simpsons. Simpsons. Some would say they're kind of clever. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. 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 You should have waited a few years and come like, you know, more like the Waltons, less like the Griffins. Mm. Yeah. No one wants to be like the Griffins, right? No, they do not. No, that's not talking about the Griffins. But this has been our review of Stark Raving Dad. We hope you guys enjoyed it. It was just so much fun to go back and revisit such a classic episode that if I hadn't been doing this review, I wouldn't have... Because I had to pull out the DVDs. And I very rarely pull out the DVDs anymore, which is a shame because I... Oh, let's get it. I love, I love just holding it. You know, it's a, it's a cool box set. Hold it to the camera there. See, it's got a slip case. Oh, the, the cool cover. Well, when was it originally coming out? Like 2000 and... They used to come out every year. The first one was 2000. So this would have been 2003 this one came out. Like, how cool is that, right? All the, all the, the we love physical media. We do love physical media. You get the booklet here. You get everything. I just, I loved it. I love pulling it, pu- uh, putting the DVD in. Ali, <laughs> Ali had actually put the DVD in. He was like, what is this? What is this? There, there's the archaic medium. Dando says, I love pulling it out and putting it in. <laughs> and putting in the um the disc into the player, I should say. But yeah, it's just, um it was just so nice having a menu. <laughs> I was like, I remember the menus. Because basically when you were a kid, oh, it would have been, what? 12 when this one came out maybe a bit older 12, 13 I used to put these DVDs on to go to sleep I used to listen to the commentaries so quite often I'd wake up in the middle of the night and it's just the menu you know you'd wake up to a oh, yeah. menu yeah that was your ASMR yeah so like I would wake up and uh, and like these menus are just ingrained in my mind you know it was just Absolutely. a yeah, flashback but anyway Stark Raving Dad great episode uh, the next classic episode we might review I'm actually going to be doing a um, I'll plug it here it's going to be at 4.30 in the morning, so you won't be doing this one with me. <laughs> you can tell. Uh, it is with a podcast. I could murder a podcast. I do like a true crime podcast over in the UK. And we're mm-hmm. going to be tackling Who Shot Mr. Burns Part 1 and Part 2. Oh, okay then. Yeah. 4.30 in the morning. If you're available, you can do it. You're right. I'm probably not going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Will you but, be here at 4.30? But have fun. <laughs> <laughs> and we're thinking of tackling it as if it's a true crime. Bit of a different spin. Wow. You're getting innovative. Yeah. I could murder a podcast so check out those guys as well and they're going to be coming on here at Four Finger Discount friend of the pod having a merry old time yeah but thank you guys for either listening to the show or watching us here wherever you're watching this podcast but for now Mr Davis any final words for those incredible supporters out there we hope you've enjoyed this episode of Four Finger Discount the podcast that is not popular enough to be different <laughs>